Hi folks, welcome back. I am going to do, I truly hope this is a short one, I keep trying to make short videos and they keep getting longer and longer. But this is a follow-up to three projects. It's a follow-up to my bridge port to my left. I'm going to put the fly cutter in and put a flat piece of aluminum on the bed, clamp it down and see if it's actually a little more perpendicular to the bed. I'm going to remove the four jaw chuck from my LeBlanc lathe and try to see how much run out or slop we have in that bearing. I don't think there is much but I'm going to try it. And finally I'm going to discuss my amp probes which was the previous video I'm trying to make five of them work and uh, give you the synopsis after I tested everything and where I may go from there. So anyway, hang on and uh, we will get set up. So I'm going to clamp this down. This is fairly flat. For my purposes it's flat enough. And uh, I'll clamp this down. Yeah, I'll pr probably be able to do that. There's not a lot to this, a lot of silence, but that's just because that's what it takes to clamp this down. Uh, more than one way to skin a cat, I guess. So that's clamped in. And here's my, my fly cutter, which... I don't have the bed clamped down, so that's a good thing. Oh, and I've got a collet in there. All right. So the goal here is describe a circle just barely touching, touch off as they say, and uh, let's see what kind of uh, variations we get. See, that's crazy. Let me get down to within a fraction of an inch. Well, what's interesting. And I may. Let's see. Okay, I took you out. What is interesting is it cut pretty equally from side to side, which is what I was shooting for. So in fact, I am much better there. But the front is higher than the back. 
I don't know how much adjusting I can do on that. I think I'm going to leave it. It's it's not a lot, and that's over, oh, I don't know, a two inch, two and a half inch diameter. So I think I'll leave that, call that good enough. So that's uh, part one. That's testing my, my uh, see how deep that groove is on the front and on the back it's just barely touching but as much as that looks deep it's it's barely there and it could also be this piece is thicker on one side uh, it's quite possible I could try another piece but my concern was left to right and we've I've proven that that's okay so that's number one task number two check how bad this bearing is I watched a couple YouTube videos and I think I'm going to remove this chuck. I've never had it off before. <laughs> so this will be interesting, but people have actually found that the chuck has given them some wiggle. So I'm going to take that off and then try to actually mic up, not mic up, but use a gauge on the uh, on the spindle itself. All right, here's part two. Um, I took off the chuck, which is, th it's, it's a taper. I don't know if you can see that. It's a taper with a key in it, and then this locking nut. And it's about a 1.6 inch inside diameter. So what I've done, and I'm going to move you over here and try not to get in your face too much here. It's going to be a little tough. Um, oops. down that's about as good as I can get and I think it's going to be in the way but basically I shoved a piece of solid rod in here built it up with wood here and I'm going to lift on this and uh, don't know if you're going to be able to see. I could not see the needle move at all. So. It's. Well, I'm going to tell you, I can barely see the needle move. So I'm going to tell you that the front bearing is good enough for my purposes. Now, can I do the same to the back bearing? Oh, we'll try that. Well, they did something internally, probably when they did the taper up front, because this side here is just barely an inch and a half. And the other one was 1.62 or something. It's definitely bigger. So I have to go find me a different piece of pipe and set up the scale and all that stuff. I guess I have to record that. <clears throat> okay, so here's the next setup. I've just got a solid bar in here for now. Got my gauge. But I've noticed, I did a test. I lied. I didn't lie, but I cheated a little. I did this before I turned on the recorder. But now I turned it on, and I want you to realize that there's probably two inches sticking out of here, and another four or five inches here, and then comes the bearing, because this is all part of a gearbox in here. So this is kind of hanging out in free air. 
because when I first did this, it moved a little. But I've got to, I'm going to show you that it does move, but it takes a while. Oh. All right. So that's that. Now, how much is that? Uh, I have to take a look at this gauge. This gauge probably is not one of the more accurate gauges. Five. I'm going to assume that's five thousandths. I'm going to interject here a little bit. It looks like it was actually about two thousandths, not five. And on the tail like that, I think it's fine. All right, we're doing an update. This is part three. We did the bridge port. We did the lathe. Now, if you saw the video on my amp probes, there's one, two, three, four and five. The bad news. This amp probe, which is the newest, it's an amp probe super, has a bad winding, bad coil on it, transformer. So forget that. And apparently that transformer is a different winding count than the others because I tried to use the transformer from this one on there and it read like double. Everything was double on the currents. So clearly there's something there and it just wasn't worth playing with. This one has a bad meter. But the problem is, is this is so old but I really don't think the meter from the new one, which is a plastic face and a bunch of other stuff, actually will work in this. I, I suspect they changed the meter. So that's two down. They're, they're dead. I had one working before that was good. It has my initials JH on it. And it still works. So I tested the voltage scales and the current scales. I did not test resistance. And I don't... I don't ever foresee me using these for resistance. I got way too many meters to do that with. So, um, so this is good. I have a good one, which is what I had before. Um, but I went to a site to test three phase, and of course I needed three meters, and I didn't have. Um, so, I and I had five of these. I said, well, clearly. I got to get two of the four others working. What I did have, which I showed in the other big in the amp probe video, so I do have the big amp probe, and that was enough between that and a digital uh, clamp on that I have that I carry in the car. Those were the three that I ended up using, those three. So one regular, one oversized amp probe, and then one probably Chinese, I don't know, digital, much newer, did the job. So what did I end up with? Well, two of these, as I had shown, again, the Ultra and the Super are a plastic base inside their... Um, their circuit board's totally different than these, even though I have two versions of this older one. The circuit boards look similar, at least. So, what did I find out? Well, besides the transformer being bad on the Super, it says Super on it, the meter 
wasn't connecting to the board. The meter itself is good when you test the meter, but then using the board and with the meter didn't work. And what I found out, and this is what happened, is I took that other transform and put it on here, is one of the screws had backed out that held, not only held the mo meter to the to the board, but was used as the return for the current on the meter. So it was corroded. Uh, so I loosened up the screw, tightened it up, and that worked again. Interestingly, the next newest one, the Ultra, had the same problem. The meter didn't work. Test the meter on the bench with the one and a half volt battery. Works fine. Go to use the, the unit. Didn't work. Hooked up the meter to a different unit, and it worked. Uh, hooked up a different meter to this. I used the meter from this one on this, and it worked. And it's like, all right, what the hell's going on here? And I found the one screw that holds the meter in. There should be two screws. There's one screw. It was backed almost all the way out. Don't know what happened. I put that in. This guy works fine. He is, he reads a little low, but you're almost in a no-go, a go-no-go -no -go situation. It's like, oh, I should be drawing four amps. Oh, it says three and a half. Well, that's pretty good. If it drew eight or nine or didn't draw anything at all, I'd worry about it. So, um, it might need to be adjusted. I'm not, I don't need them for that. I need to see that they're all fairly equal. This last one that I thought had worked before... It would get up about halfway and the meter would hang. And of course I have no parts for this one from anything left over. So I actually ended up dismantling the meter and found little particles of metal stuck to the magnet that were hanging up the armature. It wouldn't spin. So I cleaned that all out pretty good. I missed some clearly because it still is sluggish. Um, if it goes up Sometimes i got to tap it a little, it'll come back down. But, but at least it reads now, and it's not as bad. So I do have three now. And I said to myself, well, okay, if I get stuck again, what do I do? Well, this here is Fluke. And I have two clamp-on meters. One is a big one. The one is a little smaller, and the bigger, of course, the more current you can test with. But these are 1,000 to 1 um, transformers, current transformers, I guess you call them. So if you had, if you were looking at 50 amps, and you plug this into your meter and put it on the milliamp scale, it would read 50 milliamps. So... I've got two of those if I need. So now next time when I go out, I'll grab a couple meters. I might grab my Simpsons or my Radio Shack. Don't know which. Um, and I said, well, if that isn't enough, upstairs I have two more. This is an Ampro case for something very similar. So I've got two Ampro clamp-ons. No documentation whatsoever. They're made to go with an amp probe and some other chart recorders. You plug them into the to the current um, posts and it will read whatever it's supposed to read, but it doesn't tell you what it is. So I'm going to probably hook those around the main feed to my uh, ground source heat pump, which draws probably 50 amps, so that I can get a decent reading on probably on my Radio Shack meter. Um, then I can tell what they are, I can label them and stick them back in here. So I've got plenty of alternatives. I don't have plenty of extra clamp-ons. Now, I spent, oh, I don't know, three hours, four hours working on these guys. Ended up with two more good ones. So call that an hour, hour and a half on each one average to get the two working in the four hours. Don't know their condition on eBay, but on eBay they're selling for ten, fifteen dollars plus ten bucks shipping. So 
Was it a good use of my time? Probably not. Um, did it make my mind think and, and keep me refreshed with working on the bench? Yes, and that was the primary goal. Not to be efficient, not to be uh, cost-effective, but to keep my skills clean. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so that's it. That's the three, three items, uh, three videos that I've done that now I'm going to give you a little follow-up. Um, I'm happy with the Bridgeport results. I'm happy with what I found with the runout on my uh, LeBlanc lathe. And I'm happy with having two meters, at least I know, that work, and two that I know don't. So, um, there you have it. Um, so, if you stuck it out, hopefully you did because it's a lot shorter than my others. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like it, click that like button, click the dislike if you click dislike especially, leave a comment. I'd, I'd like comments either way. Um, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Um, it just costs you a couple seconds of time to click that button. Um, it's interesting if you don't follow channels that much, if you're really just browsing, and there's tons of places online that explain it all. But in a nutshell... If I were to get a thousand subscribers or more and get, I don't know, what do they call it, 4,000 watch hours, which means uh, because uh, YouTube does pretty good with their analytics on how long people clicked on stuff and so forth, I could apply to be monetized, which means I'd actually get money for all this. I'm a long ways off from that. Um, but they look at primarily how many comments so that you're engaged. Uh, how many likes you get, how many people watched it to the end, and how many subscribed. Um, a subscription, I found out, because I was on the other side of the camera for a while, a long while, doesn't cost the viewer anything. Um, it does get annoying if you click on subscriptions and then click on the notify bell, so that every time a video comes out, you get notified by a text message or an email. Um, that might get annoying if you have if you're subscribed to a bunch of channels, um, and other than that, the likes, dislikes, comments—they're just engagement according to YouTube. This is all third-party hearsay. Don't don't take my word for any of this. This is what I gleaned out of some of the other uh, YouTube videos that are made for content creators, so that they know what they're going to get when they create content. Um, again, I'm, as I mentioned to somebody the other day, I'm doing this more to document my work, to let other people see what is possible with this stuff that I work on, um, and maybe get ideas back on how I could have done it differently or better, um, or someone else has already done it. Uh, that's my main goal. Uh, I'm well past worrying about making money on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> by, the, by the time I get to the point that I have enough subscribers, I'll probably uh, be too senile to uh, continue this. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. And um, so thanks for watching anyway, uh, listening to my blabbering here. Um, I thought I was going to be back on the lister for my next video, but I'm not. I'm going to, this is it. I'm going to publish this one. Then I'm gone for a couple weeks, and I'll get back to the Lister. Um, so any of you guys waiting on that, that's that's it's coming. It's coming. I got the parts. I got everything all set up. I just have to start doing a little work on it. It shouldn't take me long to get that, that in place. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on another video, and have a good day.